Now that you know how easy it is to make things appear inside of a web browser, it's time to learn about markup languages, specifically HTML. But don't worry, you don't need a degree in computer science to understand this stuff. HTML is an acronym that stands for Hypertext Markup Language. There's two parts to this, Hypertext and Markup Language. We're going to focus on the Markup Language part first. A markup language is used to annotate a text document using a syntax that typically describes the structure of the document, as opposed to describing how the document should be visually displayed or processed. A markup language, like HTML, is used to mark up or annotate a document so that the computer knows how to differentiate the different parts. So for example, with our basic text sentences, like hello world, I could wrap them in P or paragraph tags so that when they're interpreted, the web browser knows that they should be processed as paragraphs. You can also tell the web browser what parts of the document are images and what parts are tabular data like you see in a spreadsheet application and so on. We'll dive deep into tags and actual HTML code over the next several videos, but first we need to understand how we got here and why things are the way they are. Many markup languages have been created over the years, going all the way back to the 1960s and the start of the information age. However, it is highly probable that the most widely used markup language in the world is HTML. Before we talk about hypertext and the web, an important distinction needs to be made. The internet and the web are not the same thing. Although in a colloquial everyday conversation, they're interchangeable, they're actually two different concepts. The internet refers to the physical global infrastructure, the network of networks that consists of wires, computers, and satellites that allow us to transport data all over the world at the speed of light. When building websites, it's good to be aware that all this hardware is there, but it's not of much concern to us. The World Wide Web, or the web for short, is one particular use case or application of the internet. There are many other use cases or protocols on the internet, such as voice over IP, online gaming, and so on. Now, let's take a look at the hypertext side of things. Hypertext is the idea of linking documents together. A piece of text or an image in an HTML document can reference another HTML document that the user reading the material can immediately access by clicking on it, for example. In modern times, this is known as a link. The idea of hypertext came much earlier than the web, but it was a British engineer by the name of Sir Tim Berners-Lee whom, in the 1980s, connected the ideas of hypertext and markup languages to create the HTML specification which is used to describe the structure of most web pages today. Sir Tim Berners-Lee is credited with inventing the World Wide Web. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, when the internet was just coming out of its infancy, there was no HTML, no web browsers, and there certainly weren't any websites as we know them today. When Sir Tim Berners-Lee was working at CERN in the 80s, he wanted to develop a way of sharing information over the internet, and by drawing inspiration from previously created markup languages, he came up with the first version of HTML. In 1994, Tim Berners-Lee founded the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C for short. The W3C is comprised of many companies that, to this day, continue to maintain the HTML specification and further its development for the betterment of the web. By understanding some of the history of HTML, you'll have a better grasp on what role HTML plays in the grand scheme of things. In the next video, we'll take a look at some real HTML code.